I'm going to tell you a little something about me. Um, you've probably already seen the post about me wearing a hearing aid, which I'm wearing right now, if you can not see it. Okay, um, enough about that. And that's one of the reasons why I talk so weird. I really don't talk that weird now as I did. I got new hearing aids and I hear much better now. Thank God. <laughs> um, and also, the reason why I have hearing aids, nobody knows. But because when I was, I was a baby and I was in an incubator and they were like really, really loud, I prob that's probably the reason. Or that's the reason everybody thinks. Um, so, yeah. And the reason why I was in an incubator an incubator was because when I was born they were like well, that's weird she can't breathe well I had some protein deficiency thing I don't remember what it was really called but it's a very very rare disease where um blood can't like circulate in your lungs or something and you when with each breath you take your large <laughs> your lord, what the heck? Your lungs get hard and you can't breathe and you'll die. So, and so they flew me out from this city in Utah to Salt Lake and they're like, oh, well, there's no cure. Maybe we should just, you know, put it down. Give it some morphine that they go to sleep. And my parents, I'm adopted. Yeah, I know. Ha ha ha, adopting joke. Woohoo, very funny. Um, well, they, um, my birth parents, they couldn't keep me because they were like really, really young. And so they gave me to the parents I live with now, and which I'm very blessed to have. And yes, it's an open adoption. So I talk to my birth parents all the time. I'm friends with them on Facebook, and I talk to them on holidays and stuff. I have three younger half brothers from my both mom's side, so I'm like really blessed. I have a huge family. <laughs> um, so anyways, enough about that. Um, so my parents that I live with now, they say, well, you know what, no, we waited 10 years to have this baby girl and I'm not gonna give up. So they flew me, they called, no, they called and they called and they called and my dad finally said, Hey, we got an answer from this doctor in Maryland, and they said the only cure is a double lung transplant. So they flew me out to Ch Children's Hospital in Los Angeles. And they waited, and they waited. So, and then there's this other baby named Joshua he, who needed a heart. And so he was on the waiting list for an organ transplant too. There was this one lady named Vicky who had a baby boy named TJ, but they sadly, they got in a really bad car accident, and TJ was brain dead. And so TJ went to Children's Hospital Los Angeles, and the mother went to a different hospital. And so when the dad of TJ got there, he heard that TJ was brain dead, but his organs were so very healthy and so alive, and they said, two babies need a, a transplant. So he said, okay, and so I got the lungs, and this other baby, Joshua, got the heart. And so, thank God, I'm so blessed to be here. Um, and I remember in an interview that I read when I was like six, my parents were like, well, we still live, we still have that fear that her lungs are gonna just give out one day but we live life to the forest and I wasn't even supposed to live this long. Doctors are like, oh she'll only live to like first grade or kindergarten and here I am a junior in high school and um and I'm the youngest because I got my double lung transplant at ten weeks. I'm the youngest to get a double lung transplant in Southern California. Um I don't know if I'm the youngest now but I was back then. I was the first to get a double lung transplant in Southern California. And I'm also the young I'm also the longest living person with a double lung transplant. 
so and I hope I still remain the longest living person to have a double lung transplant. Stupid fly, get away. Um, <laughs> so I am very blessed and I'm so glad I am alive today and I'm really glad I get to share my inspiring story with you because I know one of the reasons why I was put on this earth is to inspire people and the people at Children's Hospital LA they they tell my story all the time which gives hope and inspires many families who are going through the same thing my parents did 16 years ago so I think that's really cool and I just wanted to share my story with you guys so you guys understand why I'm so weird <laughs> um and I take a lot of medicines I take take like seven no I take eight medicines a day um or mostly seven medicines but on Mondays Wednesdays and Fridays I take another medicine so that's nine no, I mean eight medicines a day so yeah that's a lot of medicine but you know it keeps me alive and I'm very happy to be here and there's like a lot of troubles and stuff and it sucks but you know I'm just gonna keep moving I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep living live life to the fullest you know and I, I don't I'm gonna try my hardest to not give a damn about what anyone thinks and just keep going um but it is hard it, it's hard I'm gonna admit that like you can't you have to like not care but you know you do care you can't like not care about what people say to you you do care you just have to not let it bother you, you you're just like oh dang you know but you know what whatever you know um just don't let it bug you so much yes i actually did redo a video with my dog who um which like the dog food thing because so many people were hating on my voice and stuff and I'm just like okay fine I'll remake it but you know and then I listen to the video I'm like oh my god <laughs> my voice does sound retarded <laughs> so yeah so I just wanted to share that story with you and just keep living be strong and stay strong and I love you guys even though you guys probably hate the hell out of me <laughs> anyways bye have a good day why did I say that in Australian accent have a good day. Wait, wait, did I even not? I don't even know. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, just have a good day and have a good rest of your life. So, yeah, bye.